Okay, you're standing in front of a passive house and pretty typical construction for the west coast of BC. Because of the soil conditions here, we have a footing, instead of its typical width of 16 inches, it is three feet wide and has four individual bars running parallel to the wall, all five eighths and then an additional bar crossways every 18 inches. And that's simply to increase the bearing of the uh, footing for the home. On top of that we have a typical 8 inch concrete wall. It has been seal coated. This here is the roof drainage. It'll eventually be buried with topsoil. And below where I'm standing on is 1 inch minus drain rock which will have a covering of uh, a fabric once the topsoil is on top of it so the topsoil does not find its way into the gravel therefore blocking the drainage. What we have here is a preparation for the sill plate. Under the sill plate we have two layers of typical foam gasket. On top of that we have two layers of plastic with two beads of acoustic sealant and the purpose of the acoustic sealant is to create a true gasket preventing air penetration or airflow underneath the sill gasket. Those two sheets in turn one of the sheets will go below the concrete slab in this home and the other will be the vapor barrier that will be on the interior of a double stud wall. So basically we want to create a complete barrier for airflow to and from the outside of this home. For that we have a double foam gasket, two rows of butyl, pardon me, um, a caulking that will not harden and on top of that we have two plastic sheets and their purpose will be one is to make a continuous vapor barrier on the interior of a double stud wall so it's totally sealed to the outside the second sheet will be underneath the concrete which will be the floor surface in this house on the interior of this house foundation, I have put two layers of two inch foam to give a total of four inches of foam. And that foam reaches from the top of the concrete wall all the way to the footing to prevent heat loss to the soil. Here we have a four inch layer of expanded polystyrene foam. There will be two additional layers applied on top of it for a total of 12 inches of expanded polystyrene foam. I will at some point install half inch PEX piping for the hot water system and that's simply so that there's no heat loss is why it's been installed in between the foam layers. Okay we're here on the west coast of Vancouver Island building condition on this particular site is a little different. The footing has been covered but the footing instead of being a typical 16 inch it had to go to 36 inches because of the soft soil with four rows of rebar parallel to the wall and then a second set of bars at 90 degrees to that every 18 inches all 5 8 bar. Then we poured an 8 inch stem wall approximately 32 inches tall uh, 8 inches thick it has two rows of 5 8 rebar in it and then there are anchor sill bolts, sill bolts every four feet to meet the seismic requirements for here on Vancouver Island. We also placed a liner of foam against the foundation wall down near the footing it's four inches thick and what we have also done is inlaid 12 inches of foam below the slab. The slab is now isolated by eight inches of foam so there's very minimal heat loss to the exterior. We also chose to put the foam on the inside of the wall 
simply to prevent insects getting into it. In our hopes that this way the longevity of the building will be ensured. On here is wrapped the ABS pipe with a layer of foam gasket. That is to allow the ABS pipe to expand and contract with temperature change and not shit. Fire. The bus. Better one day. It's about 27 degrees Celsius, so tomorrow we will seal the concrete with a sealer to prevent rapid drying of the concrete. We just finished sealing the concrete with a cure and seal product and its purpose is to slow down the evaporation of water and as a result we will get a healthy strong slab. We also put in some zip strips to have some controlled joints so that the cracking will occur where I want it not where I don't want it. And uh Okay, we're going to start pretty soon framing the wall. As you can remember, the slab is over here. We've got eight inches of foam, then the concrete wall. What we're going to do is a double stud wall, so a separate plate on top of the slab, one on the extreme. The vapor barrier will come up about two-thirds in. Fiberglass, or pardon me, rock sole insulation here, and rock sole in. Okay, the uh, windows that I'm going to install in this house are triple pane and they will be also be filled with argon and they will use a low E glass and they will sit in the wall about halfway in the inset and their only thermal bridging will be the plywood going from one side to the other. As a result, there will be very little heat loss. And uh, we will tape those windows very well to prevent leakage. Laid the slab down yesterday. We used 4 inches of 30 MPA concrete. We sealed it with a cure and seal. It was a very hot day, 27 degrees Celsius. So to prevent cracking, we sealed it very quickly yesterday afternoon. As you can see now, the vapor barrier is continuous from the sill plate, across the foam, and down and under the slab. So there's now eight inches of foam separating the concrete from the exterior concrete wall. As a result, there will be very little heat loss from the slab to the outside. Okay, what we've got here is a 20 inch wide wall. There will be a sub sill put in then a 2x4 plate will sit on top of it and then there will be studding every 24 inches and at some point there will be added a support to allow the vapor barrier to be brought up and create a curtain two-thirds in from the exterior so that there's no problem with dew or the dew point. So the interior studding will also be 24 inches on center. There will be very little thermal loss. The only thermal loss will be at the windows and the doors where the plywood travels from one side to the other. Otherwise there's a complete thermal break from the inside to the outside. Today we installed a shower pan that's recessed in the concrete and um, at some point I will tower, tile the shower pan and it will be wheelchair accessible. And there will be controls outside the uh, shower stall so that somebody can help somebody who has limited mobility.